Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with another unboxing video. And I've recently done Don't Stop the Music, The Complete Recordings, Volume 1 by Trapeze, which is from on the purple imprint as part of Cherry Red. And this is part two, which is Midnight Flyers, The Complete Recordings, Volume 2 from 1974 to 1981. So let's have a quick look inside and see what you get. So coming hot on the heels of Don't Stop the Music, the complete recordings of Volume 1 of Trapeze from 1970 to 1992 is this one, Midnight Flyers. The complete recordings, Volume 2 from 1974 to 1981. Um, this is more, to me, is even more exciting because these albums were, in a way, are harder to find. Um, of course, the, the glory years for Trapeze, which many people see as the first box, these first few albums here have been released on double and triple CDs. And so a lot of people had to buy this to get these, the absolutely superb live recordings. On this one, it's possible that from people, someone like me, I'm getting everything here for the first time. So there's a booklet, um, which I'll go through last of all. And so we've got the albums, Hotwire. Now this, I must point out that actually what they've done on here is they put two of the albums on one disc. So Hotwire and Trapeze, Hotwire from 1974 and Trapeze from 1975, um, with all the credits there, is actually on this disc. So there's the Trapeze cover. So that's what they've done on here, as you can see. So it's, it's a two on one on that one. And then we have Hold On from 1979. Now this, I don't know if you can see that. This was the cover that in the UK we had, which was a Morris Minor um, with with someone's hand on the wall. You can't tell whether they were actually um, being attacked or whatever. It was a kind of very strange cover for, for trapeze, really. But that was the UK version. In, a, in Germany, um, I have to be very careful how I take this out, um, they decided on a totally different uh, cover um, which I'm centering here for those of a sensitive disposition, or oh, mainly for the YouTube um, AI police. Um, and the album was actually called Runner over there. And um, so there were two separate covers. So the the kind of one that was more risque is from Germany. And this was the first album to feature Peter Golby, who I interviewed for the Now Spinning Magazine podcast not that long ago. And it's a good album. And then you've got a live picture, and they were on to Live at the Boat Club, which is included from 1975. With all the track listings on the back. And then we've got Live in Arlington in Texas, which is here. And then Dead Armadillos from 1981, which also has Peter Goldby on. And then the booklet kind of moves over to the the actual um, booklet, well, the information that came actually from that time um, when the live album was originally released. That's the Boat Club one. And this, you, you can see the words here, are actually from Mogallium 2003. So that is the Midnight Flyers trapeze box set from Cherry Red. So that's Midnight Flyers, volume two, trapeze, 1974 to 1981 six cd box set with a book in a clamshell box so what are my thoughts well my first thoughts are uh, i'm going to just roll back to this one because as you know when i did this one i think the issue for for, for people if there was an issue was that trapeze medusa you are the music were just the band had been released as deluxe editions in the minds of many collectors not that long ago now bearing in mind of course when you get to a certain age uh, five years is, is about a week, okay? And um, when you're 18, um, five years is like a, the difference when you're playing with Lego or listening to Led Zeppelin. Um, so I can see why, um, you know, some people thought, well, I've already bought those deluxe editions, so I don't know whether I want to buy this box again because what I really want is live in Dallas. Um, you know, that's what I really want. And... And the other one, Welcome to the World, had been out before. So do I buy all of this to get live in Dallas? And this is the tricky thing, isn't it, with, with marketing stuff, because also there's the double live album on vinyl, 
from this period. Which, for me personally, um, I didn't buy the deluxe editions um, for for trapeze, so I've only got single release editions on the Lemon Records label, which aren't very good. So this was perfect for me, um, you know, and worked really, really well. And the live stuff is absolutely off the scale, as I said. So, and the other thing, of course, was that the booklet contained all the essays from the original, the previous deluxe editions by Malcolm Dome, and they'd all been, you know, put into a single booklet. So you, you were also getting the same information again in the booklet, if you'd already bought the previous ones. If you hadn't, like me, this was great. So that's a bit of preamble. The reason I'm saying that is because this is very different, um, because it's, it's probably less likely that many of you got the albums in this set, because they have not been very easy to find, even to stream. And for me personally, um, this was a period of trapeze that I didn't really know a lot about. I, when I think of trapeze, I always think of Glenn Hughes. It's Glenn Hughes's favourite band. It's it's his baby. He always talks so fondly about it. You just think it's all him. Listening to this um, has made me realise that as much as I love Glenn Hughes and he's one of my favourite musicians, it isn't all him. I don't know why uh, over the course of 50 odd years um, that's where I've that's where I kind of landed really because it's actually Mel Galley. Is you actually realise when you listen to this, uh, these CDs, that Glenn, yes, he's absolutely key part of the ingredients. Um, you know, um, is if it's a chili, then he's the chili beans, isn't he? But you know, but without the the spice and the the, and the sauce and everything else that goes in it and the rice, it isn't a chili. And and when you listen to this, uh, uh, the first the first album is Hot Wire. And this one, 1974. 1974, I, I obviously, Glenn Hughes has just joined Deep Purple. I haven't got much money, so I'm, I don't really know much about trapeze. I can't go and find them. One of my friends are fans of trapeze, so I don't, apart, the only album I knew, and that was because someone, an older uh, friend had got one, was um, You Are The Music, which is, I listened to because of Glenn Hughes. And I, so there was a feeling that once Glenn Hughes had gone, that they were a band that had, um, that were no more, which is so unfair because Hot Wire, Backstreet Love, Take It On, Take It On Down The Road, Midnight Flyer, Wake Up, Shake Up, Turn It On, Steal A Mile, Coming Home. They were, you know, if, if you're into Bad Company, Humble Pie, um, you know, they were, they were contenders. They could have been any of those bands, you know, and they were already massive in Texas, as you'll, you'll see when I um, get to that point. And then later that year, well, at 75, um, the album Trapeze came out, and which Glenn Hughes is on. Now, this is where I'm really pleased that we're getting the booklets, because um, this could have easily been a fold-out piece of paper with some artwork on and a bit of credits couldn't it so we are getting booklets um but but we're not always getting essays now we're getting like as if we're finding the original albums just um, and taking the, the credits from whatever albums have been out before and just putting them all into a, a staple together booklet which is which is absolutely better than nothing but the but, but the trouble is is that it doesn't tell a cohesive story if you're new to this period of the band or any band or you're trying to work out who played on what and where so uh, as you saw when i went through the booklets you've got all the credits for um you know for for the first these two albums but trying to work out which credits belong to which album is is quite tricky uh, for instance on the trapeze 1975 one it says special thanks to glenn hughes but it doesn't say um really what he plays on i guess i mean he write he writes on chances but um but whether he sings on anything well, sorry with the credits what i'm trying to say is yes i could look this up on wikipedia and i can listen to the album and work it out myself but a bit a bit of background to how glenn hughes was back singing with trapeze when he was in purple and how that came about um, I think would have been nice to know. And for, again, I like to when I invest in a when I invest in a box set, um, it's knowing how it all fits together as the story. Okay, but I'm, you know, I'm I'm 
as a box set, as you'll see as I go through this, I absolutely love this, but I'm just trying to be absolutely objective as well. The next album called Hold On, which is the first one with Pete Golby on, who I interviewed on the Mouse Mini Magazine podcast, is terrific. Production-wise, not quite as good as the others, but some great songs. And I, I think when I was listening to this, I thought, why didn't I pick this up? I remember seeing the, the album cover with the Morris Minor. I remember seeing that in the shops and thinking, that's an, that's an old car. That's not very rock. Um, but of course, the, the German cover um, with the nudity on it, obviously, I never saw that. And in fact, until I opened this box set up, I didn't even know that existed, to be honest. Um, so it's interesting because that would have completely, I would imagine, you can see when the band were actually, you know, fine looking young men, that would have completely alienated 50% of their potential audience, I imagine. Um, and there's, uh, as you see, there's some life, there's some live pictures and stuff. And then we're on to the boat club, which came out a lot later. Um, I think it was 2003, but it's from 1975. So there, that this must have had when it came out a booklet in it, and in in or some notes in this in the in the sleeve, and these have been replicated later on in the in the cover, which is I found quite confusing in how it flows in telling the story because it only tells part of the story about that but not really fully for what happened next but anyway that isn't why probably you're all getting this um it's probably trapeze live at texas hall um which is in 1976 when glenn hughes was back in trapeze after deep purple um um, faded away and split up in at that time now this is an important document it's not the quality isn't quite as good as the previous live stuff in the first volume but it really is good it's not bootleg quality it's really good it's a little bit rough in places but it's it could be an official release okay easily but what makes this special um is going to be songs like la cutoff and space high um, because they are from Glenn Hughes's forthcoming solo album Play Me Out Play by Trapeze um, and it really is an important album it really is fan absolutely fantastic stuff and at this point there are three of them it's a trio you know Mel Galley on lead guitar Dave Holland on drums and Glenn Hughes on bass and vocals and it's absolutely brilliant and then the last disc in this set is Live in Texas, Dead Armadillos from 1981. Um, I remember this coming out and it, it had a lot of good press at the time, but by 1981, my head was elsewhere. But this is Pete Golby is on here and he's in fine form. And this, the songs on here really suit his voice. Great vocalist, of course, he was going to go off and join you right a heap. Um, it's, there's just six songs on here, but Backstreet Love, which was from the first album I mentioned in this set, is superb. Hold On, Midnight Flyer, You Are The Music, Black Cloud, Wait Back To The Bone. Um, Mel Galley's guitar playing is exceptional. A really rich Gibson Les Paul um, sound, really fat, wide, big sound. And, you know, on, on, the, beat, on, on the Boat Club stuff, it's fantastic. On all the albums, it's, 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 it's what this, what this box set, you know, has given to me, and although I've, you know, I've kind of given a little bit, a couple of criticisms about it, but you know, that's my job, isn't it? To with anything like this, is are you, is it worth you buying, buying, spending your money on it? Um, and if if there's one less thing that I would say could have made it a bit better, and this is probably unfair because by what I'm about to say, I would have made it a seven disc box, but it would have fitted in. Would have been that. Um, where is it? This one, yeah. But these two albums, which are on the same disc, um, High, Hot Wire and Trapeze, it would have been nice, because they were single sleeves, it would have been nice to have those on separate discs. I know that would have made it a seven disc set, but it would have been nice because then you could have had the, the proper back covers. The proper back covers on both of these albums could have been part of it. Collectors think like this, we just do, um, and we are part of the target audience for this. However, that aside, I have to say 
that because a lot of this music was new to me, or I've only heard snippets of it over the over the years, I actually enjoyed this more than this one. I think because of Hot Wire Trapeze, Hold On were, were fairly new to me, and I, I was blown away by how strong they are. And it makes you realise that back in that day, um, how hard it was to make your mark. I mean, there were so many bands out there, but there was there was so it was so difficult to hear everything. I mean, now this morning before I did this video, I'm 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 listening to a band I don't know much about, and I can go from one album to the next. I can just find them all and stream them all and get a feel for it. You know, then you'd, you'd ask someone down the pub that you went to and say, "Have you have you heard the new Trapeze album?" No. And that means I've got to go and buy it, but I've only got so you know my apprenticeship wages will only allow me to buy one album a month, so I can't take the risk. But all of these albums were, all of these albums are absolutely top notch. Um, and, you know, to have this, I've got them both. And I've realised now that Mel Galley is a, is an undeclared rock hero, really, a guitarist. What a, what a player. I mean, obviously, I was aw I was aware of this on the first set. Um, I'm not saying I wasn't, especially live in Dallas. Um, you know, there's some, and on the live vinyl album, um, which I could recommend as well. This is only available on vinyl at the moment. Live at Houston, 1972. It's like they're in the room. Uh, one of one of the um, Chris Harris is a, a member of the Facebook group. He said it's like having trapeze in your front room. That would be, that's one hell of an image. Um, but it is. And live in Dallas off here is like having them in your front room. And this is like having them in your garden. It's probably fairest to say. But it's, they are a fantastic band. So if you are into British hard rock with fantastic guitar, the, now the, the difference I mentioned at the beginning, they're a bit like Humble Pie and... Yeah, actually, because I mentioned Bad Company. Bad Company were not an improvisational band. They, did, you know, they might have had libbed in lyric, lyrically and stuff, but they didn't go off on one for fifteen minutes with guitar and bass and whatever trapeze do. And it's not just like we'll just stay over here for five minutes in a four-four blues rhythm and then tell, just nod when it's time to come out. It's really intricate, really intricate bass playing and, and guitar licks and rhythms and everything it's really really interesting it's not boring or oh i know this it's really fantastic playing it really is gosh i've gone on a bit on this one haven't i but anyway that is out it's on the purple imprint it's trapeze and it's recommended um it really is i've loved the music and trying to get hold of these separately is nigh on impossible. And that is again why these sets work so well. It's because instead of trying to search through eBay and you know spending tons, they all come together in a nice little shiny box and you can play them whenever you want. So Trapeze, what a band. Not just about Glenn Hughes, Mel Galley, fantastic player, absolutely fantastic player, and surely missed, you know, really, really missed um, player, fantastic guy. Thank you for watching, thank you for being here, thank you for supporting me, and stay safe, remember music is the doctor, and I shall see you very, very soon.